Switching to 5G broadband can seem like a really good idea, but you might be wondering, in the real world, what are the pros and cons of using 5G to get online at home? So today, we've gone over what's good and what's not so good about using 5G broadband. But before we begin, thanks to 3 for sponsoring this video. Their 5G hub deals offer the cheapest, fastest way of getting online with 5G in the UK at the moment from our testing. So if you're looking to buy 5G broadband, click the link in the description to their coverage tracker and put in your postcode here to see if you can get their 5G hub router and unlimited data sim bundle at your address when you're watching this. One of the biggest benefits of 5G internet, in our opinion, is its value for money. The 3 5G hub is just £21 a month at the moment on a 24 month contract. This is really good value given the speeds on offer. With BT broadband for example, you'll have to pay about £33 a month to get similar sorts of speeds to what you can expect with the 5G hub. In most areas, the 3 5G hub is the cheapest way of getting online with a download speed of at least 100 megabits per second. The catch is, if you can't get 3 5G and you need to use Vodafone or EE instead, it won't be this cheap. The Vodafone Gigacube, for example, is £40 a month with unlimited data, and it's even more expensive with EE's 5G router. These prices aren't too bad, given the speeds on offer, but they're not a lot cheaper than fibre broadband is, like the 3 5G hub. So make sure to click the link in the description to the 3 broadband coverage checker to see what deals they're offering on the 5G hub and to see if you can get it at your address when you're watching this. Using 5G broadband, you can often get faster speeds than what's available with fibre at your address. Many households are still limited to super fast fibre speeds of about 30 to 100 megabits per second, or even lower, if you're still stuck on copper ADSL internet. But when we tested the 3 5G hub, we normally got a download speed of 200 to 300 megabits per second, with a pretty decent upload speed as well. And using the 3 5G outdoor hub, which they might suggest on their coverage tracker, depending on where you live, thanks to the outdoor antenna it comes with, we got download speeds of up to 550 megabits per second, and an upload speed of nearly 50 which is competitive with all but the fastest fibre broadband plans on the market at the moment. But even if you only get about 300 megabits, this is plenty for most families. And even if you can get ultra fast fibre broadband at your address, which will be faster with 5G internet, you'll often be paying a lot less on a cost per megabit basis. Fibre broadband plans are really inflexible. You normally have to commit for 18 or 24 months, and obviously, you can only use the service at one address. Unless you move house, your provider might be able to come with you, depending on where you're going. But with the 3 5G hub, you can just unplug it and take it with you anywhere in the UK with 3 4G or 5G signal. The router will try to connect to 5G, and if it can't, it'll connect to 4G instead, giving you download speeds of about 30 to 40 megabits most of the time. This means you can use the 5G hub when traveling, or in a caravan or motorhome or something like that, which obviously isn't possible with traditional fixed line broadband. The reason we're talking about the 5G hub specifically here is with most other 5G broadband solutions, like the Vodafone Gigacube, according to their terms and conditions, you can only use the service at a single address. So this isn't always possible, depending on which 5G internet solution you're using. And 5G internet is also more flexible from a contract's point of view. As we touched on before, with BT broadband, you have to commit for 24 months when you sign up. But with the 5G hub, there's a one month plan available, making it a much more flexible solution. Remember, to get out of a contract with any broadband provider, you basically have to pay off the entire remaining cost of the contract, which is really expensive, and you definitely don't want to do that if you don't have to. So with 5G, you can get a short-term plan on a proper router, and you can also use these MiFi devices if you're looking for something even more portable. Rather than plugging into mains power, they come with a battery, but still create a Wi-Fi hotspot you can use to get online. With 3's 5G MiFi device, we found the download speeds aren't as good as the 5G hub, about half most of the time, but they're still pretty good. Even if multiple people need to get online using the hotspot, 
at the same time. So click the link in the description to 3's 5G MiFi deals page and also their home broadband coverage checker to see what deals they're offering on 5G internet when you're watching this. Latency is basically a measure of the responsiveness of your connection. When sending and receiving small packets of data, rather than making big downloads, like when streaming TV, the higher the latency, which is measured as ping in milliseconds, the less responsive your connection is. With EE fiber broadband, we normally get a ping of about 10 milliseconds, and with the 5G hub, we normally get about 35 to 40. Most of the time, you're never going to notice this. A 40 millisecond ping is still low, but for online gamers, having the lowest possible ping can be important. So we've tested 5G internet solutions quite extensively playing online games to see what this is like. And for most games, while fiber broadband is the best choice to minimize your ping, they're still perfectly playable using 5G. If you plug into the router using an ethernet connection rather than using Wi-Fi, even on quite ping sensitive games like Rocket League, we were still able to play well and didn't have any lag spikes or packet loss. But if you're playing really competitive, really ping sensitive games, stuff like Counter-Strike and maybe Apex Legends, fiber broadband might be a better choice. Compared to a lot of other countries, the upload speeds on offer from 5G in the UK are not the best, although they are catching up to what you can get with fiber. With EE's 300 megabit plan, for example, you get a 49 megabit upload speed. But with the 5G hub, we normally get about 18 to 20, and 47 or so is the maximum we've ever seen using 5G internet. When we installed 3's 5G outdoor antenna on the outside of our house, and with some full fiber broadband providers, like Community Fiber, who are available in Greater London, you can get symmetrical download and upload speeds, meaning on their 300 megabit plan, both your download speed and upload speed are about 300 megabits or a bit higher. For most households, your download speed is going to be a lot more important than your upload speed because most people download a lot more data than they upload. And this means an 18 to 20 megabit or so upload speed is plenty for most people. But if you often upload large files, if you work from home, for example, and do video editing or something like that, you might want faster upload speeds than what 5G internet can provide. This isn't a big issue, but it is worth mentioning. With 5G internet, your speeds can fluctuate a lot throughout the course of a day. With the 5G hub, this range for us was about 200 to 350 megabits per second. This is why on the 3 website, they advertise an average of 150 megabits. In our area, we've never got anything this slow with it. When it's at its slowest throughout the course of a day, it'll still be about 200 megabit, and then it'll bounce back up towards 350. With fiber broadband, unless you live in an area with a lot of evening congestion, your speeds will probably be more consistent than this. They might fluctuate by 5 to 10% at a maximum most of the time, not 30% or more. To help out with this, when you buy the 5G hub, it comes with a 30 day return policy, meaning you can get set up with it and run it for a week or so, doing speed tests at different times of day to see what the download and upload speeds are like. And if you're not happy with the speeds, you can send the router back within 30 days and get out of the contract. This return policy is quite good to see because most fiber broadband providers don't give you this much flexibility to test the connection before you commit to a 24 month contract. So make sure to click the link in the description to the three home broadband coverage checker and put in your postcode to see if you can get their 5G hub or 5G outdoor hub at your address when you're watching this. So should you switch to fiber broadband? In the majority of cases, we think it's worth trying. It offers fast download speeds, including unlimited data for a really low monthly cost. And 5G routers are a very flexible, portable solution. They're a good choice if you want a short term contract or the ability to get online almost anywhere in the UK. There's only a few situations where 5G probably isn't the best choice. The first is if you're a competitive online gamer and you want the lowest possible latency all the time. And the second is if you want the absolute fastest download and upload speeds 
at any price, a full fibre broadband, if you can get it in your area, will normally be faster than using 5G, although it will be a lot more expensive. So thanks again to 3 for sponsoring this video. Make sure to click the link in the description to see if you can get their 5G hub at your address. And if you have any questions about 5G internet, or you're not sure if it's right for you, leave us a comment below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can.